This video will consist of diagnosing and rectification of an alternator warning light on a DAF LF45. Once I'd managed to find which isolator the driver had turned off, I started the vehicle and was able to verify the customer's concern, which was the alternator warning light illuminated on the dip. While my apprentice was with me, I took the opportunity to explain to him what sort of voltages you'd get from an alternator that was functioning correctly, and what sort of voltages you'd get from an alternator that wasn't functioning correctly. And as you can see from the video, this was currently reading 25 volts as it was not charging the batteries. Once I'd managed to get the vehicle in the workshop and got the cab over, I was able to start work on diagnosing the alternator. Here I was able to check the alternator for loose terminals and pins and also to see if there's any corrosion to the terminals. Once I'd put the chassis number in on RMI, I was able to look up the specific information under system information on how the alternator works. Once I checked the two B plus connections on the back of the alternator and verified that they were showing battery voltage, I could then turn my attention to the alternator brush pack. The brush pack on the back of the alternator has three connections. Connection 15, which is pin 3, which power is supplied to the alternator after contact. This circuit comes from the fuse box and is used to energize the alternator and charge the vehicle. The alternator does have a failsafe built in and if connection 15 ever fails the, the alternator is able to self energize and will produce power after 1500rpm. The sense connection pin 4 is used to compensate for voltage losses in B+. This connection is connected to the power distribution on the side of the engine block with the MIDI fuse. The last connection on the brush box is the L connection which is pin 2. It's connected to VIC and also displays all the faults that can be detected through the alternator. After using the battery voltage from pin 4 on the sense connection to jump over to connection 15 on pin 3, we were able to energise the alternator. Now we have identified that we have an open circuit on connection 15, I need to go through RMI and identify location information for fuses and the connectors. Once I'd checked the fuse location and number, the wire number and connector locations, I was then able to start in the fuse box and work my way to the alternator. Once I'd finally found the fuse, I was able to check both sides of the fuse for power 
and then then I decided to check the diagram again because you know you just doubt yourself all the time. After verifying the fuse in the fuse box was okay for the alternator, I went back to RMI and consulted the data and then moved on to connector 307F. 307F on the other hand decided it didn't want to come off the block today. Once I'd got the connector off the block, I was then able to use a breakout box and a connector lead to verify the voltages from the fuse box. As you can see, pin 3 had 24 volts, which means the open circuit is in the short loom between connector 307F and the alternator. I decided to check wire 1121 with my multimeter for continuity. DAF wiring strikes again, but then the truck is 2013. The customer was given the option to replace the loop, but they declined, so this was going to have to be a repair job. Once I'd identified the connectors I needed, I set about stripping the wiring loop from the vehicle and remaking the connections. I could have gone all the way back to 307F with the wiring, but then I'd have had to start splicing into other looms.
Once the pins are in the connector and the wiring was back in the conduit, I was then able to test the alternator for correct functionality. 